Today we're working on a 1990 15 horse Mercury Mariner outboard motor. And this motor is sat up for a lot of years and has got a little bit of stale gas in it. So we're going to take the carburetor off and do a cleaning on the carburetor. First thing to do is remove this linkage. You can actually just lift it up with your hand and pull it off. Next, let's go ahead and remove the gas line. Next, there's a clip right here that needs to be raised up. And as that stainless steel clip, clip raises up, then it'll allow this enrichment valve to be able to pull out the front. And the clip just lifts up and out. And just looks like a horseshoe like that. Get this plunger to, to pull out of here. There's a screw right here that when you spin this out, you can see how it releases that tab. This, the screw is actually blocking this enrichment armature from coming out of there. And once you pull the back that screw out, now this piece will actually slide all the way out. There's another piece here, you know, that comes out, you know, with it also. So now it's time to take the two nuts off of the carburetor base, one here on this side, and one over here on this side. You we'll also have to take out the two nut and bolts right here. Now this whole thing will actually lift right up out of the way, so now we can pull this carburetor out of here. There's a small hose that attaches on the bottom of this carburetor that goes back to the power head. This hose is actually an air pulse hose that operates the fuel pump on the carburetor. If there are any breaks or loose connections in this hose, the fuel pump will not work. Next, I'm going to use my air pressure to blow off any debris or sand or anything like that off of this thing. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need e any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair? What's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have. I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came. He took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent. Okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. Okay, now let's get back to our repair, and I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. Okay, here's what the carburetor looks like now that it's out of the motor. And today we are not putting a carburetor kit into this one. We're just going to basically be disassembling it and cleaning up you know, all the passageways and bowls and, and jets and needle valves and all that. They do sell carburetor kits for most of these carburetors. And if you wanted to go that route and get the kit, then you can certainly get all the new gaskets and springs and, and diaphragms and all that to put into it. But for what we're doing, I think this will be sufficient. We have our valvoline carb and throttle body cleaner. And it has this hose on it. And so we're going to basically take apart all of these different little covers and we'll use the tube you know on the can to blow out any of the little chambers or, and get everything all cleaned up. So I'm going to take out the four screws there for the cover of this enrichment body valve and you can see all that blue button right there. When you pull out the knob on the front of the motor it actually has an armature that pushes this down and it's supposed to pop back up but on this one when you push it down it doesn't come back up for a little bit so you see how slow it was. So Here's what it looks like once it's off and actually you can see we have a little bit of dried up crusties in the bottom of this thing and there's a blue plastic thing here that has kind of a pin that sticks down and that's part of that button that depresses on the top. The bottom of this enrichment valve body 
actually has a nut on it and it screws out. And as you can see, there's a spring and a little metal ball that go up inside this. When you look up inside where the spring and ball was, there's actually a small passageway there that when the ball gets depressed, it allows fluid or gas to run through this chamber here. So once we pull this bowl off, we'll be able to spray it out with our carb cleaner. You just take this nut off right here on the bottom of the bowl, and that's going to drop this whole carburetor bowl off this thing. The bolt that actually comes out of it actually has a jet inside the nut that we're also going to blow out. Here's what the bowl looks like on the inside. That pin just fell out of there. Be sure to inspect the tip of your needle where that little red cone is and make sure that's not indented or anything like that. Make sure that your float is not waterlogged. And here's that passage I was telling you about right here which actually goes into the bottom of the enrichment valve chamber. So I've blown that out with my carb cleaner. Next I'm going to blow out the hole right in the center of the nut that was on the bottom of the carburetor because that's a jet. And likewise I'm going to put my carburetor cleaner tube down here and blow this out. And there's another hole in the ceiling of it right there. We'll blow that out. And then we'll also go ahead and blow out the gas chamber right here where the needle valve goes. Put my enrichment valve back together and now look how easy it goes up and down doesn't stick at all. Now I'm going to take off the side cover. This is actually the fuel pump. I've got the side cover off. The back side of this has a black, almost gasket looking thing. And that's actually a diaphragm that makes the fuel pump work, which that hose we took off the bottom of the carburetor, you know, actually has a pulse uh, vacuum that pushes this back and forth and causes this thing to pump. There's also these stainless steel valves on both sides of this body here. And those flappers have to be good and clean and make sure there's nothing, you know, uh, caught underneath them so that they would not be able to pump or something to that effect. You can see the back side of the one inside that hole and they flip it over and there's the reverse and you can see the almost the back side and this one is on the reverse side. So when this thing pumps back and forth on that diaphragm and it's up against the spring right here it's actually causing these two flapper valves to suck and push, suck and push, which, which is how the carburetor maintains its proper level in the carburetor bowl. So again we're going to take our carburetor cleaner, spray all this off real good, clean it up, and put it back together. We're also going to again use our carbon choke cleaner to blow out all of the passageways that are exposed here with this cover off. And what you do is you insert the straw you know, into a hole and stick it down inside and then just hit the, hit the spray like that and it'll blow out the other side of the hole, whatever it's lined up to. In case you didn't see where the little red tip pin came from, it goes right here underneath this armature the ceiling of the carburetor bowl and then this piece right here folds down on top of it and then as the level of the gas goes up and down in the carburetor bowl this float actually pushes up against it to shut it off so that it will not fill the bowl with too much gas. Now I'm going to blow out that jet that was in the bottom nut of the carburetor bowl. The slotted screwdriver here is actually a valve and we we don't want to lose adjustments where it's set, so I've actually scratched a little shiny spot right there at the bottom of the flathead. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it in until it hits the bottom. So it basically can turn one half, one, that's it right there. So it almost did one and a half turns. And so now I'm going to take it all the way out, but when I put it back in, I'll go to the bottom and then I'll back back out one and a half turns coming right back up to my mark that I scratched on the casing. When you pull it out, this is kind of what it looks like. And the very tip of that basically seats down there, you know, into this screw hole. And the number of turns that it spins out is the amount of gas flow that it's going to allow. We'll take our carburetor cleaner and we'll stick down the hole and we'll blow it out. It actually came out the back side of this carburetor right here. When you have the carburetor off, you can look down the throat of the motor and you can see these metal flat valves. These are shutter valves that will only allow air and gas mixture to flow one direction. You can see on the bottom set, there's a little bit of rust on them, but they still seem like they're closing. If these valves are stuck open in any way, you may have an issue with the reed valves that may have to be addressed. There is a frontwards and a backwards to pushing this piece in, because you can see how this slot right here is where that little armature flows back and forth on top of this, because this piece is separate from the, the arm. So it is possible to get it backwards, and you'll think, why, why doesn't it fit? Getting this piece to line back up 
into the front of the carburetor, you know, is a little bit difficult. You might want to leave the bolts to the carburetor a little bit loose as you're trying to slide it in. And at the same time, you also have to have this little arm in the down position before you slide the piece into the front to be able to catch it so it'll stay in place. When you're going to reinstall this clip, this front plastic piece, rotate it and there's a slot that it matches up to that it'll push in just about an eighth of an inch further so then you can line up your C-clamp on the back of there and get it underneath the edge. It's going out pretty good and interestingly this front knob which it says pull the choke, which is not really a choke, but it's just an enrichment valve. And then actually this knob, you can actually also twist it if you want to slow down the idle, or twist it the other way to speed up the idle. It's this lever right here, the way it works, is actually it's changing the spark advance, you know, when you twist the, the knob like that. And then of course you also have the adjustment on the carburetor, and then you have the adjustment right here, which is also a, a spark, minimum spark advance setting. As well as an adjustment here and an adjustment right there also, which is the maximum of what I can get. Hey, I hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you are the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.